Welcome back to the team sponsor, Leading the Win podcast. I'm CEO Sean Connor. It's a pleasure to be joined today by the one and the only John Cruz. John Cruz with HitLogic up in the uh, Bend, Oregon area. Um, known John a long time, former college baseball teammate of mine and uh, entrepreneur extraordinaire, changing lives one day at a time. Hope everybody's ready for some, uh, some one-liners you're going to walk away with and they'll be imprinted in your mind for a long time. So. Johnny, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, no worries. Let's go. I love it. I love it. Let's jump right in, dude. What's what's it like up in Bend right now? Uh, crazy, uh, cr- crazy weather. Are you guys getting the seventy degrees, uh, three hundred days of sunshine? What's going on? Yeah, we got about you know today's going to hit about seventy five, and then uh, Friday it's supposed to snow, so uh, it's like seventy five today, and then high of thirty, thirty five through the weekend. I think we're going to finally get into that winter, you know, but it's just. You just adapt and overcome. Not a baby. There's one of them right there. I love it. Adapt yeah. and overcome. Good, man. Well, talk to me a little bit about it. You guys, uh, you and your wife, Katie, have started HitLogic. Uh, you guys have, uh, what, three locations now in the in the Oregon, uh, the Western Oregon area or Eastern Oregon area? Yeah. So we're just, uh, we're continually growing the business, you know, everything from, uh, brick and mortar locations to an online presence. Obviously our focus has been a little bit more online with uh, the pandemic that rolled in kind of made us uh, pivot a little bit in terms of our business, but it's, uh, you know, no, uh, no bad things, just opportunities, man. That's awesome, dude. I love it. Your positive vibes are, uh, are, are radiating through, uh, through our meeting here today. You want to definitely dive into that. Um, one of the reasons, you know, a lot of people will be asking, Hey, we got coaches and athletic directors that, yeah, that follow each team sponsors podcast. I'm like, okay, why do you bring on a guy from a, from a, a, a hit logic, uh, you know, gym? Uh, what is it that, that John's going to be able to share today? And I thought, man, this guy's just got a ton of positive energy. he got a great story to tell. Um, so uh, we'll get into definitely some of that and talk a little bit more about just how you've chosen to lead during this time. So let's talk That's a little bit about the, the, the hit logic program, man, just in terms of what you and Katie have been able to build up there. I said, Eastern and Western Oregon. Ben is in Central, Central. Oregon. Yeah. Yeah, Central yeah, okay. Oregon. That's, I, I, uh, I uh, got a little thrown off there. Um, but, uh, you know, you guys, got a, you guys got a really special thing going on up there. You mentioned the pandemic. You talked about a pivot. Take us through that, man. All of us are, whether we're, you know, we're running our own, we're running our own business. We're running our own athletic program. We're running our own athletic department. Uh, we're in charge of leading people. Talk to us about that pivot the pause, what you guys planned on doing and what have you been pursuing? Yeah. So uh, just a little bit of background is I grew up with an athletic background, was been in sports all my life. Uh, my wife happened to be a college basketball player. And so when we got kind of uh, out of our collegiate careers and decided to move forward and met each other is that fitness and being in shape and just healthy in general, kind of leaving, leading that competitive lifestyle has always been a thing. So what we did is we opened up a fitness center, just kind of took a few chances, a uh, small boutique studio, um, but it was more than just the workout. We realized that we're not only getting people uh, healthy in terms of a physical standpoint, but people from a mental standpoint. You know, we see people come in there and they're defeated for one reason or another. And a lot of times that's not because, oh, my knee hurts because I'm overweight or um, I'm out of shape. I want to get a little bit healthier or whatever it may be. It, it's typically something deeper than that, right? Something that's caused them to get into this situation. So we've realized that with a lot of our clients. And then so it really kind of struck a chord with us. And we just decided, hey, we're going to dive all in. So we got something special. It's sticky. It um, resonates with the community. And so we started to grow and grow and grow and grow. And then uh, that's all done through brick and mortar. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hit. Uh, and like I told my wife, it, uh, it, it uh, didn't necessarily change our business plans. It just sped everything up fast forward. We were always planning to go to an online model, a virtual model, so that we could reach the masses that weren't here in Central Oregon. Um, because we think we do have something special. But um, that blueprint, we had to fast forward three years worth of work and condense it within, you know, 60, 90 days. And like I said earlier, the way that we've always looked at it is that there's, there's no bad things. It's just uh, opportunities that are out there. And so we looked at it as an opportunity and, uh, you know, during this time, it's super crazy time, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's fascinating in the world of business. 
Um, and we kind of just took our attitude from in between the lines on the sports field and just replicated that blueprint in what we're doing now. And we feel that, uh, that we're maybe at the beginning of the pandemic, we were five steps ahead. We're one step ahead now, but our goal is not to uh, lose that lead. Love it. it during the last, uh, or so let's go back to those, those first 60 to 90 days where you said you kind of had to speed everything up. I think all of our listeners and, and viewers can take themselves back to that March to May timeframe, being on a high school or college campus, leading student athletes, leading other coaches, leading an entire administration, whatever it is, they really were in a fearful state. You know, we've had other guests on our podcast that have talked about that. How do you move from fear to learn to actually build something constructive? Take us through that. What was that like? What were the conversations that you and your business partner, aka wife, uh, were having? And, 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 and what did those, um, what did that pause and ultimately pivot give you? How did you guys stay in that positive frame of mind? Yeah, so I mean, I think part of it is is that you just you, you have a little bit of time to think about uh, challenges or if it's not the pandemic, mistakes that you've made, um, but you can't change it, right? So uh, there's things that you can change and you can't get mad about them because you can change them, and there's things you can't change and you can't get mad about them because you can't change them. So you have a little bit of time to dwell on it and then boom, you got to move forward. You got to make a decision. One thing that I like to say all the time is whatever decision you make is going to be the best decision. So if we decided to crumble and fold down and close our business, that would have been the best decision for us because there's no other way we, we couldn't sit there and think, oh, we should have done this. We should have done that. You know, that, that doesn't lead to a healthy lifestyle. So uh, we decided, hey, we're going to go all in. We feel that we got this. And then we looked at the opportunities. We saw what would happen. Unfortunately, in the business landscape, we knew that there was going to be other businesses that closed their doors. We don't want that for anyone, but we looked at that as an opportunity. So let's get through this. Let's get through that first month. Let's get through that second month. Let's get through that third month. So it was, uh, and we didn't get it all right, but when you don't get it all right, you just adjust and adapt. And I think more than anything, as a business owner, as a human being, as a student athlete, whoever you are, whatever your situation is, it's all about communication. So if we just went dark and we didn't talk to our members, we didn't talk to our clients, and we didn't have that communication and just be open with those people, honest with those people, be raw with them, let them know, hey, this is going to be tough, you know, but we're going to be honest with you and we're going to tell you exactly what we're doing, you know. And so I think that if you have that communication in a leadership role, then uh, everything's going to end up all right. And in the end, everything's going to end up all right. So that's kind of what we did. We took our, um, we had a business model to open up another location. Instead, what we did is we pivoted. We invested that capital into um, opening another location, but we considered that other location our virtual location, our online uh, location. So we built out a new website. You know, we built out ins and outs to make it easier for people at home. We knew people were going to be at home. And so uh, just like everyone, they're scrolling through their phones, they're scrolling through their computer. So we wanted to remove as many obstacles as possible to get them to click on our um, opportunities for them to be healthy while they're, they're there in the pandemic. That's awesome, man. We've uh, talked a lot about like the the opportunistic nature of, um, you know, when there's negative things going on, right? Control the controllables. And it sounds like you guys definitely did that. A couple of things I took away. Communication. Communication was key to your success. Um, you know, part of being, I think, a, a, a successful or being a true leader is being able to effectively communicate. Um, but let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about the leadership style. You, you've obviously, you, you and your wife are leading a team of people within your organization, but you also are leading a greater mass of people, right? And so what are some of the things maybe that you guys look back and say, wow, okay, we led this way and it yielded this success, or is there a certain leadership style that you went into and, and, and said that, hey, we're going to lean on this type of leadership style, or is there leaders you've learned from in the past that helped you get through that stage of communicating and leading people so that you guys could take advantage of these opportunities you identified? Yeah, so I, I the first to kind of touch base on uh, role models or leaders uh, in the past is, it's interesting and my situation is that, that that blueprint of a leader has always stayed the same. However, depending on the time in my life, that particular leader may have changed, you know, growing up and developing me into the man that I am 
them today. I was blessed enough to have two caring parents that were involved quite a bit. So they were my leadership role models at that particular time. And then as I moved into a later stage in my life, then my role model became my wife and my children and my family unit. Um, that became kind of who helped me lead, you know, and I took examples from them and then from their kindness, even if it wasn't a business acting them, it was, it was from their kindness, you know, or whatever it may be, their characteristics. Um, but it's interesting. It's interesting, right? It's so I, I have this uh, thing where I call sitting at my table. So I have five to seven seats at my table. It's just like your Thanksgiving table. And uh, you want people around you that are going to give to you, right? And that you can also learn from you. So you never want to be the brightest or the smartest or the quickest at your table. And you never want to be the person that's just at the bottom of your table either. You want to be right in the middle there. Sometimes some of those seats change, but for the most part, if you keep your circle small and people are invested with you, I think you can learn a lot. So what we did is we took a lot of my style. My style is more business operations, just black and white. I don't show much, much emotion in my business. However, my wife is more community driven, right? And so, and I think, and, and before the pandemic, I was, uh, I was a little reluctant to adopt that community mindset. Um, but then when the uh, pandemic hit, I realized, man, there are so many opportunities to learn from people. I had the opportunity for months beforehand to learn from my wife because the community aspect is what got us through it. So that leadership, how you lead can change. It's just, I think that you always have to leave with an, lead with an honest, honest communication skill set and you have to lead you know you have to lead believing in yourself like i said every decision you make is going to be the best decision you can make yeah i love it and you're definitely passionate about what you guys are doing like you said there's a there's a there's a, a healthy lifestyle that you wanted to live and so that i'm sure comes through in the way that you guys lead uh in your group you know we've got coaches and athletic directors that are viewers and listeners and as they're listening to somebody obviously very passionate about something that they do i think you know we can they can relate, right? They can say, hey, I, I'm very passionate about what I do. I'm passionate about the community that I'm building within, whether it's the, 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 the local geographic community that they're in, whether it's the community within the walls of their institution and their, their teams. Um, what type of advice would you give to leaders right now? You know, you've led through a pandemic. You've had people follow your lead. I know your business has grown. So people have followed your lead because they want to follow you. What kind of advice would you give to leaders of other people and student athletes that are listening or watching today? Yeah. So one of the things that I uh, took from uh, my skill sets is that when I played sports in between the lines, there was uh, something that I knew growing up. Once you hit a certain age, you realize you're either the most talented or you're not the most talented. I was not the most talented. And so I knew that there was only one way to compete, and that was to be the hardest worker out there. My parents installed in me that if I was going to be a janitor, and there's nothing wrong with being a janitor, but if I was going to be the janitor, you'd be the best darn janitor that there is. So I always was never, ever going to be outworked, okay? And so when, that, when I say outworked, that means physically, that means uh, educationally, I'm continually learning. I was reading playbooks. I was studying film over and over and over. And then I realized after sports was done, gosh, I invested all this time into this skill set of working so hard. And what do, what do I do now? And then I realized that you can take that same skill set that you learned as a coach, as you learned as a player, as a student athlete, and you can apply that to whatever you're doing. If that's sales, if that's marketing, if it's communication, if it's in a cubicle, I don't care where it is. You just take that, take what you're good at and implement that blueprint in what you're passionate about. And that's a formula for success. Good plus, plus passion. I think you're going to outwork everybody and be successful. I love it. Yeah. Pat, it, work ethic, work ethic, right? Effort. Just that's, if that's never questioned, you're going to give yourself a shot. And I know something that you're passionate about. You've built, um, you've built, uh, you've been involved in a number of different businesses in your professional career. Um, one of the things that I know you really were passionate about was building the chance project. I know you, you know, talked to, and you talked about, you know, building a community within the HitLogic community in Central Oregon now, but looking to expand that. Um, I know you've built, you know, the Chance Project in, in, in the past. What, where did some of those passions come from and what led you down the path to be able to create 
those types of things. Yeah, I think, I think growing up, I never really even knew where my passion came from. I know now, though, um, you look at the world differently when you have children. And um, I have two little girls. And the way that I'm looking at it right now is, what is my legacy? Um, is my legacy, my, my children are never, ever going to remember if I paid the power bill on time. But what they are going to remember is they're going to remember if dad loved me, if dad was a kind person, if he helped other people. Um, I think that you will realize, and especially in the times that we're in right now, is that we as people, we're a lot more similar than we are different. And sometimes just reaching out and connecting is what you need to do. Uh, and you'd be surprised at the opportunity. I, I have this, this a rule, I call it the high rule, because as men, we aren't, uh, we aren't mo the most social animals. And so uh, I just say, hey, if I pack four people today on the street, I'm gonna say hi. And I guarantee you, one of those is gonna turn into a conversation and the conversation potentially turns into an opportunity, right? And if it doesn't, at the very least, you made someone's day that may have needed to be said hi to. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so I consider myself where my passion is coming from is I consider myself a broker of connection, like connecting people, connecting people to their thoughts and making their thoughts reality. Um, I think there's a huge opportunity there, and that's kind of where I want my legacy to be. That's awesome, man. I love it. Legacy. How are you going to, what is your legacy going to be? That's something actually, we talked about that internally at the company. We, we've actually had, um, uh, we had a, 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 a gentleman that came on and talked to us, former military, talked about uh, his unbreakable story, really crazy, tragic, you know, health story uh, for him, but um, came on and, and, and talked to us back in June about, um, you know, perseverance, um, you know, never giving up uh, and specifically, hey, what's your, what's your legacy going to be? What are you, what are you fighting for? What are you living for? Um, so, I'll piggyback off that, uh, uh, Mr. Scott Flansbaum. That was his uh, his question. What are you fighting for? Uh, what are you and, and your wife? What are you guys fighting for? Yeah, I'm fighting for right here, man. Look, live a great story, right? So I want to live a great story. I want to live a story that uh, people remember honorably. You know, so I want to. Uh, I and I would be. I would not be surprised if a lot of these people that you're talking to, maybe they approach it a different way, but they have a lot of the same skill sets, right? They have the go get them attitude. They have a, a no matter what decision I make is the good decision type attitude. Um, so yeah, that, that's, what, that's what I wanna do is I wanna live a great story, not only for my family and people that I know, but for myself, how fun is that, right? You know, I wear this yeah. shirt right here that says built for this. Well, what is this? It's life, man. What do you, I get that question, <laughs> I get that question all the time. I get that What's question this? all the time. Hey, John, what are you training for? You're not an athlete anymore. What are you training for? I'm training for life. You know, what are you training for? Let's go. <laughs> I love it, man. You gotta have a, hey, man, if you, don't have a, if you don't have an end, you don't have a destination, you know, then there's no journey, right? Where are you headed, right? So I love it. You know, something I've, I've, I've taken from this too, you've talked about kind of the, the short-term focus or short-term goals that you set for yourself. Like, Hey, how are we just going to make it through? And we're just going to look at this day by day, month by month. But to your point now, in terms of the living a great story and, and having that, that long-term plan as well, what are you fighting for? What are you living for? Um, I think that anybody, you know, per, you know, anything profession aside, just personally, right. That's a, that's an important thing. I was going to get to values. Cause I think that, Leadership is something that we, our company, value greatly. I think leadership is, there's a huge leadership void in this world right now. Um, and I think that um, uh, people have chosen to lead in uh, certain instances, but maybe don't have necessarily the, the confidence to do it. Um, others, you know, you could say, yeah, they're predestined, right? They were, they were born with it. They were born with the charismatic nature to be able to do it. Um, looking at yourself, what do you value? Do you value leadership? Is leadership a big part of, you know, living your story and what you're built, what you're, what you're building yourself for in terms of life? Uh, what are some of the values, the core values that, that you're living into every day? Yeah. So I think that's a great question because uh, I think that there's two types of leadership. There's uh, I think that anyone can be a leader. A lot of people can be vocal leaders. 
Um, and also you can be a leader through your actions, but those aren't always good. Uh, those aren't always good qualities. You could be a, a leader that maybe your actions aren't uh, of the highest standard, but a lot of people follow you. you maybe you have a good uh, vocal leadership point, uh, piece to you. I think that uh, being an honorable leader is very, very important. I think that um, I think that if we have the ability to look ourselves in the mirror and stop lying to ourselves, you will find out uh, really who you are as a raw human being. You know, so like in my industry, if you're not uh, in the best health, don't make excuses for yourself. Look in the mirror and just say, "Hey, man, you are out of shape. You are not getting it done, right? You have to, we." Have, we as people, we as leaders have to stop lying to ourselves. So I think we have to be honest and honorable. And when I say honest and honorable, that's not just to the people that we are leading, that's to ourselves as well. Yeah, I love it. You got to be, you got to be, that, that has to start with yourself. Um, unpack honorable for a little bit. Because I think there's, I think honorable, I think for most people, they hear the word and they go, yeah, honorable. Okay, yeah, I want to be honorable. Mm -hmm. What does honorable mean to you? What, 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 unpack, unpack that for us. Yeah, so I think it's changed quite a bit over the years, but in my situation right now, honorable means uh, to be honest, have open communication, right? Don't say something in front of someone that you wouldn't, or to to someone that you wouldn't say in front of anybody. Um, I think that there's no purpose in kind of um, extra, I guess is what I'm saying. So for instance, I coach a couple of quarterbacks here or there also, and what we talk about all the time is unnecessary movement right unnecessary movements we want to minimize the movements to make you more efficient and i think that's the same thing in being honorable is we don't need to go on and talk about how great we are or talk about other people or you know just for the sake of conversation is let's minimize the movements let's be strategic about the way that we talk and know and this coming from a parent because i've noticed it more than ever my kids hear everything that i say is that Talk as if someone's right there. Don't have coach's eyes, right? Like coach's eyes are when you're uh, going to put down the ball and sit down and relax because coach isn't on the field with you. You're only going to work your ass off when coach looks over at you. Coach That's having yeah. coach's eyes, right? So yeah. we, don't, we don't want to lead with coach's eyes. We want to be honorable in the fact that at the end of the day, like I said, when you look in that mirror, that you can say you gave it your all. I always say, you know, hey, uh, better than yesterday, better than yesterday, right? So uh, you may not beat yesterday, you know, in terms of uh, production, but you can always be better than yesterday. I'm going to improve on this. If my goal was to wake up at six o'clock and work out and I didn't do it because I slept in, well, guess what? Now is the day. Now the time is now, right? So I think honorable is a, it's an interesting word. I think that that can change the meaning of it can change per individual. But what I would say is I would just say, you know, um, honorable to me is honesty. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's a root word. Makes sense. The, uh, yeah, I think that, I think a lot of people can take, um, there, there's an, there's an honest assessment that everybody can take from that for sure. And I think, you know, I, I, I look at, you know, student athletes, coaches, athletic directors, the challenges that they have every single day. Uh, especially right now, right? Distance learning, not being on campus. Um, hey, when I'm, if I am on campus and I am practicing and when I go home or I'm in my personal life, what am I doing to take responsibility to make sure that, hey, look, I don't, I don't come back and get somebody sick or, um, you know, I'm doing the things that I need to be doing. Something that I, I, I heard you say that I think makes a lot of sense. People talk about the rule of 1%, right? That this, there's this, this, this law of marginal gains. If you just do, if you are incrementally better every day, 1%, as you said, that honest assessment of yourself. Cool. I can, Hey, I didn't do that well today, but it's, it's tomorrow now. And I'm not going to get stuck on start. I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to be better because I'm going to change that one thing. And if I get incrementally better 1% every day, then um, to your point, right. Get better every day. I think that's a, that's a great point. Um, what, uh, what, what's exciting for you right now? You guys are, uh, we're heading into uh, Thanksgiving here in a couple of weeks, going to be wrapping up the calendar year. Um, before you know it, it's going to be 12 months since this pandemic happened. And I'm sure you guys are going to be looking at all the opportunities that you took advantage of and created. What's uh, most exciting for you as you look forward? 
Yeah, so I think what's most exciting, actually, it kind of goes back to what you were just talking about, is is that, um, you know, it's real easy. Even we we got caught up into it because we had to stay ahead. Was that you you just you try to get better today, right? And then you get a little bit better, and you get a little bit better. Um, that's great if you're increasing that one percent every single day. Obviously, that's the goal. However, remember, my advice would be is that remember that we're not building the team, we're building the program, right? So there's a bigger vision to that is that we're building the program. So even if you're taking a step back, we're building the program. So same thing with my business is my business is, is like, we're taking all these incremental steps, we're journaling them, we're writing them down, you know, uh, maybe once a week I go back and review kind of what's changed and compare it to the week before. But you don't always see those changes, especially in the fitness industry, even if you're someone working out, you don't see those changes from Monday to Tuesday. You see them from Monday of this month to Monday, three months down the line, you're building the program, right? And so I think that that's what's most exciting right now is with all these changes, good changes, errors and mistakes that we've made, positive things that we've made, things that work now that once this pandemic is over may not work. Um, I look, I'm excited about that because it's helping me build build my program so that's what i'm excited about awesome dude um i know you get a lot of source you, you, you're uh, you mentioned earlier you know leaders are readers right you read a lot you're you're constantly seeking out information to grow um what are you reading right now um i'm reading a book called uh warrior it's uh the book warrior it's uh how to be the best man the best man alive is basically the title of it warrior so uh yeah, it just kind of focuses on what I was talking about, that reflection in the mirror. And it's just, are you happy with your spirituality? Are you happy with your finances? Are you happy with your um, relationships? Are you happy, you know, with your health? Um, so it's a checklist that you go through and you just make sure that you're happy in each and every single one. And then you make those positive decisions every single day to improve in each one of those buckets. Love it. I love it, man. Uh, one of the books you re you recommended that I read is uh, Compete Every Day. Um, oh, yeah. I, the, dude, awesome. Uh, it's a quick read for people that are out there, uh, you know, looking for something to pick up. Quick read. I think it's 100 pages or so. Um, yeah. Really impactful. What look, Looking back at, I'd say you're one of the most competitive people I've ever met. Um, and that may not necessarily shine through in this conversation. Most people might say, really? And say, yeah, I, I competed on a field with this guy. <laughs> so I've seen it. I know I competed against him and I competed with him. Um, there's elements of what you read and in, in compete every day that I think uh, folks can take away. I don't want to give it away unless people want to read it, but maybe what are some of the things that you pulled from that and talk about learning and, 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 uh, and getting better. Uh, what are some of the things maybe that you took away from compete every day that, that you're applying in, you know, whether it's in your life or in your business. Yeah, I, so I think I think part of it, the first step is, is that you want anything, any educational tool, you want to find a way for it to relate relate to you personally. So the word competition or the word compete, um, for me, I've come to realize is I could switch it out with a hard work, so or work hard. So I don't look at myself as competitive anymore, but I do look at myself as the hardest worker. And so my competition, I realized was against myself to be the hardest yeah, worker out there. Eternally. So I just, yeah. so I just take, I take that. I kind of replace the words with compete with hard work or work hard. And then I read through that book. Some of the things that I took away, it was actually kind of an overall takeaway was that everyone, once you read this book, you as a hard worker or as a competitive person will realize you say, you know, I, I kind of already knew a lot of that, right? But us, I would say that its primary audience would be a male audience reading that book. And, uh, and me, just because I am a man and it's something that I can speak to is that I think it's encouraging to hear other people thinking the same way. So you don't sit there alone on an island. That's the worst thing you can do as a business person, as an athlete, as a coach, is sit alone on an island. And again, it goes back to that communication and not realize that there's other people sitting on an island that might be right next to you. 
And all you need to do is tell them, hey, no, we're all on the right path together. So it was one of those takeaways that I had, yeah. Pull, pull a seat up to my table, my five to seven yeah. chairs that I got. Let's go sit, take a seat. We need you there. You know, one of the things, um, I know you, you've been a great unifier of people. I know you're doing that obviously in your business. You've been very successful at that. Um, but something that I know just from you personally is that you've done that with your, your kind of that group, right? That, that inner circle. Um, and you've, you know, whether it's a group text message and say, Hey man, reach out to two guys today and let them know they're going to kill it today. Um, you know, compete, get after it, um, get 1% better, those types of things. Um, where did that come from? Yeah. So that's funny. Uh, well, it's not funny. It's actually a pretty serious subject, but um, one of the things that unfortunately just kind of being eyes wide open and trying to learn a lot during this pandemic. Um, and I know people react and are on a roller coaster with this. And I don't think that there's any right way to act during it um, because no one knows what's going on. But um, one thing that I did notice is that they're maybe not first degree friends, but friends of friends or boyfriends of friends or husbands of friends. And I've seen the unfortunate suicide rate go up uh, uh, in males. And so, and these are, these are good males, right? Um, these are good people. Um, and so it can apply to anything. But for my, what I saw was I saw uh, men not having someone to talk to. And so for me, it's important to reach out to not only my close friends at my table, but if you're on the other side of the restaurant, I wanna make sure that I send you a text message and say, hey, how are you doing, right? And sometimes that can change things around. And what I found, which is totally surprising, and I encourage everyone else to try it, is that I realized once I sent out those text messages to five or six people throughout the day or throughout the week, it takes two seconds, right? At the end of the day, I looked at my phone and I had five to six back. And those five or six back, I actually needed them without even knowing it. I needed it more than they needed it. Um, and, and so we can, we as humans and as leaders, uh, we can create this snowball effect of positive change. No matter what's going on around us, we can create that snowball effect. And it's, it's really up to us, but it, uh, I know it's, it's silly, but it's hard to be the first person to do it. And then so yeah. when you're the first person to do it, you'd be surprised how many other people would say, gosh, I was just thinking about doing that or gosh, this is so awesome, right? But sometimes you got to step out on the limb, limb and uh, be the first person to do something like that. I love it, man. You're pushing people to their limits. You're, uh, they're exploring and, and realizing potential. They're finding that competitive drive that, 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 that fuels their work ethic. There's some great, great stuff in, in all of this that I think anyone can take back again, whether it's personally or being able to apply some of this with the groups of people that are in their life, again, personally or professionally, that's awesome stuff. Um, one of the things we've been doing during this whole thing uh, in, in terms of the, 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 the podcast, John, is we've been talking about how do you send, send people off with a, with a, you know, with a real positive message. Um, if there's a, if there's a, a daily mantra, if there's a, a, a positive message that you would send to people that are leading those young men, right? You and I've had a lot of conversations about that, right? There's a lot of young men out there that are really struggling right now. They're having a hard time. Uh, a lot of people are, but specifically young men, we've identified that. Um, what, what positive message would you send to either those, those, those people or the people that are leading those young men? What positive message would you send to them today? Yeah. So the biggest thing is just one statement. It's just, you're worth it, right? You're worth it. So uh, no matter what situation you're in, you are worth it. So if you're in a situation where um, you don't know which way is up, just know that you're worth it. And if someone isn't reaching out to you, please, please, please reach out to someone else. If you're a leader in this situation, remember you're worth it as well. Because just because we see happy people and successful people uh, in the business front or uh at, at the bar or wherever it may be, the same person that is happy and smiling uh, may be breaking down inside, right? So, um, or they may be not taking care of their health. They're a great business person, but they're not taking care of their health or yeah. they're great in health and financially and at home, they're having a tough time, right? So I want them to know that they're worth it, right? You cannot help others until you help yourself. Yeah, I love it, man. I love that. Yeah, it's a uh be invested in the relationship with yourself and with, with others and, and share that. I think that's, that's awesome messages to share. Well, good, bro. Hey man, I'm glad you were able to make it on. 
Uh, this yeah, is some good stuff. We got, you got it, brother. We got 40 minutes of this. This will be, this will be great that we can get out to, to all of our, our listeners and our followers. Uh, we're up to, we got you know, 3,500, 4,000 followers on Twitter and our, our uh, YouTube channel is growing as well. So a lot of, a lot of people in the athletic industry uh, that I'm sure can take a lot from this and some really uh, positive stuff that they pulled out of it. So John Cruz with Hit Logic up in uh, Bend, Oregon. Thanks for joining us. Give my best to Katie and uh, the girls. And uh, yeah, man, really appreciate you coming on. All right, man. Have a good one. Thanks for having me. All right, brother. All right.